All right, and welcome back to a very special edition of Inspired a Galaxy. Um, today we're going to be covering a documentary film uh, that just came out. Um, it released, well, uh, about like two months ago, and then uh, just like last week it came out on PBS. It premiered um, on their American Masters series, which is like their documentary features. Um, so if you uh, want to watch this, uh, you definitely should. So you can go to uh, pbs.org and uh, just search for um, – the Waterman, which is the movie we're going to be talking about. And you can watch this documentary. It's excellent. Highly recommended. Uh, go do that. So we're going to be talking about the documentary today. So if you want to watch it before you get kind of spoiled on the story, um, definitely go do that and then come back and check this out. But Cassia, you found this documentary uh, first, and I am a big fan of documentaries. I really like, you know, stories about people who are inspiring or creative and just, you know, kind of learning about their background and, you know, how they you know, kind of rose to, you know, being at the at the level in their careers or in their personal lives or, you know, kind of anything. But but you found this. How did you kind of learn about the Waterman documentary and uh, get into it? You were able to watch it um, at an actual theater. Um, mm -hmm. But what was your what was your introduction? How did you learn about this thing? I just saw the poster for it and it looked intriguing and I I saw that it was going to be released near me, which um, is hilarious because usually, like, I feel like I get things like months or sometimes years after everyone else gets them. But mm -hmm. um, it just looked like an inspiring documentary about someone I didn't really know about, uh, Duke Kahanamoku, and this documentary was done by Isaac Halasima, and it's kind of a documentary that kind of. I think kind of gives Duke his due, you know, because uh, he's a mm -hmm. surfing legend, Olympic superstar, Hawaiian icon, and, and an American hero. And I'd never heard of him before I'd heard of this movie. And I found it to be an inspiring and informative documentary that really touched on a lot of topics. And some of the topics, like, we've kind of talked about on our podcast before and I just thought it would be a good way to kind of end the month of May because it's the Asian American Pacific Islander month and uh, mm -hmm. I just thought it would be a good way to celebrate that. Yeah absolutely absolutely yeah like you mentioned you were able to go and see this at the theater so um, we've wanted to talk about this for quite a while but it never came out at a theater near me you know it did like it's new york and la premieres and then it's been traveling around to um you know various film festivals um i think it was in florida for a while and then they went over to like australia new zealand and we're doing some showings there but it never came out in a theater uh near me hopefully that changes in the future hopefully it does come to a theater so i'm able to you know go out and kind of support it that way but i was very excited when it was going to be on pbs so i was going to get the chance to watch it um and it came out just in time that you know you and i were going to be able to watch it like you said for um uh, AAPI month, which is which is awesome. So we wanted to do an Inspired a Galaxy and talk a little bit about it, uh, talk a little bit about Duke and uh, his story. Uh, you know, a little bit about the the documentary, which is really well crafted and uh, I think really important because, yeah, like you, Cassia, yeah, I had no idea who uh, Duke Kahanamoku was. Um, I didn't know like anything about his story, and yeah, he's definitely an inspiring figure. You know, for for everyone, but definitely, you know, as a as a son of Hawaii, you know, really important for the people there, um, and really important for the people of the United States of America. You know, he was an Olympic star, a uh, surfing star. You know, kind of spread that sport around the world. Uh, he was an actor. He had this this crazy expansive life, and it's it's crazy to think that you. We'd, I, I didn't know anything about him, right? And I think that you know I'm not alone in that. So you know, really, you know. Uh, you know, big shout out to Isaac Halisma for, you know, bringing the story out and, you know, getting it in front of everyone. Yeah, it was a delightful documentary. It was just kind of like where I was at the time, like usually doesn't get too many of the kind of niche uh, documentaries and films, sometimes like Oscar contenders, like mm -hmm. I didn't get them where I was, but I was like, wow, it's actually coming where I am, like, and I don't have to, like, drive a, a couple hours to, to see right. it, you know? Um, so I was just, like, I was happy about that. And in honor of today's episode, uh, I'm drinking water. 
Um, oh. <laughs> I was planning on getting, uh, you know, a uh, dole whip, but that didn't end mm-hmm. up happening. So, yeah, yeah that's right. Um, and I actually, I, I found a, a kind of a, a cocktail here um, that they'd actually shared on the Waterman movies Instagram page. I think they uh, had made this as part of one of their um, like red carpet premiere events, but it was just a drink called the Duke, which was uh, tequila, pineapple juice, orange juice, cream of coconut, lime juice, um, agave syrup, and then a Red Bull uh, yellow edition. I've never had a Red Bull <laughs> yellow edition, so I don't know, uh, you know, what that tastes like. But it sounds fancy, and I think it's fun that they made, you know, kind of their own signature cocktail to, you know, to honor the Duke and to honor uh, this movie. So you know, having having some fun, uh, spreading the world, at, spreading the word of, you know, Duke and his story, and you know, watching the documentary, that's kind of the sense you got uh, about Duke. That's how. You know, he kind of lived his life. He was, you know, excited and happy to spread, you know, spread the word of surfing, spread the word of Hawaii around the world and really became kind of this cultural icon, uh, you know, back in, you know, all the way back to, you know, when he broke into like the Olympic team doing swimming, um, which I think was in like the 1920s. Yeah, or the 1912 Olympics was the the first one and uh, won medals in 1912, 1920, uh, 1924 and yeah, then just went on this whirlwind tour and just, you know, spread the world, the word about, you know, what it, what, what it meant to be a waterman, what it meant to uh, be a surfer and, you know, kind of that, that culture and just spread it around the world. Yeah. And one kind of fun connection uh, with surfing and, and Joseph Campbell is after Joseph Campbell graduated from, from college, um, he kind of did some traveling uh, and made it to Hawaii and uh, surfing was kind of starting to kind of take the world by storm then, but mm-hmm. around that time period. And I, I wasn't able to find out for sure if like Joseph Campbell, like learned how to surf from Duke, but that would be an awesome, uh, <laughs> I don't know, just like connection. Like if, they these two people ever met uh Mm -hmm. and joseph campbell actually ended up retiring to hawaii and he's actually buried on the big island of hawaii uh oh okay yeah and neither neither brian or or i are uh native hawaiians but uh if we get any details wrong just uh let us know and we'll we'll try to uh correct anything uh in the mm-hmm. future but we just love this documentary and we we loved uh learning the history from it yeah yeah absolutely and so the the way this documentary is kind of structured it's kind of it's it's narrated by jason momoa uh which is awesome he does an excellent job but then it's kind of like it's kind of split between kind of like like reenactments um i i believe the the actor who's portraying duke i, I believe his name is Dwayne DeSoto. um so he's he's playing him so when they're talking about kind of his life and the things he was doing you're kind of seeing uh that represented that way but then it's also like played up against this uh archival footage from a tv show called this is your life which ran from, I think, 1950 to 1961. And then there was a couple of seasons of it, you know, uh, you know, like a decade or so later, uh, a couple of those. But uh, what This Is Your Life was, was basically like, uh, it was a TV show where they would get like an actor or a famous person or um, a sports star, you know, some kind of celebrity uh, to go into Hollywood. They would tell them that they were going to be, you know, shooting a commercial or doing a TV show or something. But But they would get there, they would get on set. And then it's kind of like this, uh, kind of like this like autobiography that you're watching of yourself and you know friends and family are coming out and telling stories it, it's actually it was is really touching if you can go back and you know watch any of those but duke was on this show because he had you know this super profound impact on uh you know obviously the people of of hawaii but um you know kind of everyone and uh, around the world and you know people whose lives he touched and saved and uh you know uh, spread the word and went to the Olympics with. Um, so it's, it's really cool. It was a really interesting and uh, fun way to kind of structure the story of the documentary to, to tell this story, both kind of with reenactments and, you know, kind of this archival footage of uh, him on that TV show and, you know, stuff from the Olympics and things like that. Yeah. And I think it was a good way to kind of frame it. And it was amazing to see like this guy was an important surfer Olympian and 
also acted, but like I just get the sense that like he was a, a good person and he saved a lot of people from a shipwreck. And I'm like, wow, like he he made he made a difference, you know, and uh, and. It's just sad that like I I didn't know about him, you know, and but through this documentary, I I, I learned about him, and uh, he had a prolific life, and um, I I also enjoyed um, kind of like the what I learned about uh, kind of like Native uh, Hawaiian culture, like surfing like is is sacred you know and Mm -hmm. uh, it's being connected like to the water and it's almost like a a meditation as you see the surfboard be crafted and it was just a a beautiful kind of moment and one thing that really struck me uh, was at the beginning there was that animated portion that kind of illustrated, mm-hmm. I guess, quite, you know, literally, because uh, it's animation. Kind of like what happened to Native Hawaii. Kind of like how we talked with Huni. Like, there are definite parallels to episodes uh, 59, 76, 77, 125, I want to say. And uh, kind of like how... The U.S. colonized Hawaii and like prohibited Native Hawaiian language, their their culture, their burned uh, their places of worship, and uh, I was just like, wow, it like happens all over the world, and and it's sad, and I was just mm-hmm. glad that uh, Duke was able to kind of share something like Native to Hawaii with the world and I'm glad that it seems like uh, people recognize him with uh, statues and and monuments and that it's not whitewashed, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, um, it was nice in the documentary. um, You'd mentioned that it kind of had spread the culture and it it really seems like um, they did a good job of bringing in, you know, professional surfers and um, you know, a, people that you might be familiar with if you're familiar with surfing at all. But, but it really felt like, you know, they all kind of, you know, held Duke with this high respect. Like he, you know, is, is the reason that, that surfing, uh, you know, is, is a sport and it's so adopted, you know, kind of, you know, on all around the world. And I think that that's neat. Um, you know, one of the things that he talked about, you know, as, as a young man, he was in the Olympics for swimming. He wanted to um, he'd always said that he wanted to see um, like surfing as an Olympic sport, which um, it is now. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Um, you know, and a lot of uh, today's surfers, you know, really, you know, look back to Duke and, you know, say that he kind of led that path for um, how that was going to happen. You mentioned that, that he was an actor. I think he has, um, I have pulled up here, 14, 14 acting credits, um, you know, and he probably didn't get the due uh, that he had, you know, because he was a, a native Hawaiian um, but, you know, he still still was able to, you know, kind of break into, um, you know, the other parts of life and, you know, bring the, uh, you know, bring kind of his uh, Hawaiian uh, mindset and traditions, uh, you know, along and, you know, kind of into into places where, you know, it might not have been able to or be possible uh, to without his influence. Yeah. And one quote I really enjoyed from this documentary was he changed lives just by being who he was. And they kind of explained the, the meaning of aloha. It's kind of like you are facing the world with like your heart, who you are. And Mm -hmm. which reminds me of like, follow your bliss. Like when you're, when you're doing that, right. uh, You're, you're doing what you're meant to do and you're helping the world and your community as you do that. And I, I kind of think that uh, Duke is one of those people who really, really did that. It came off, you know, um, as a very humble person. He'd mentioned that he would uh, saved a lot of lives and, and the shipwreck, but, and, and they do talk about that. And that's actually one of my favorite parts of the documentary is this kind of archival footage of this is your life. And they um, are talking about when he was going out to this uh, kind of capsized boat and uh, bringing people in and uh, they were all kind of meeting him for the first time right you know so many years after after the fact but then 
you know, kind of in with that. They're showing like all of these other um, just like newspaper clippings of where Duke had literally, you know, uh, like swam out and rescued people on the beach, you know, just saving lives. And it wasn't something that he ever talked about because that was just his philosophy. You should be, you should be nice to people. You should be kind to people and you should uh, take care of people. Um, And that was very much like a Hawaiian mindset. And it was something that um, he really held, held true. You know, it wasn't important that he was saving their lives because that's what you are supposed to do as, as a human being. That's, that's what you do. And I thought that that was, was really cool. And um, you know, something, you know, in addition to, you know, the stuff that we think about, right, you know, gold medals and, uh, you know, having statues of yourself, but, you know, just being the selfless person in the world. And uh, Duke was, you know, exemplified, uh, you know, what it means to be a good uh, global citizen, a good person. Uh, and yeah, yeah it's just unbelievable, you know, hearing hearing the story. And, uh, you know, like we mentioned, kind of at the at the offset, you know, this was someone that neither of us were familiar with. And uh, that that's really a shame. And hopefully this documentary can help change that for a lot of people. Yeah, I definitely hope that more people are able to see it. Like, what if it gets re-released and maybe it could get an Oscar nod or or something? I I don't know. I I just want the world to see this movie and Mm -hmm. love it. Like, I love it. And uh, one fun fact I kind of learned is on August 24th, 2015, a Google Doodle honored the 125th anniversary of Duke Kahanamoku's birthday. So I didn't realize that, but uh, that's pretty cool, I think. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I didn't realize that either. That is very cool, um, and it's it's cool. I just uh, I mentioned it briefly. Um, you know, the statues. So there's there's the statue of um, Duke in Hawaii. There's and there are also statues of him in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, which is amazing, um, and one of kind of the kind of the neat things that you have going on throughout this documentary is as they're kind of talking and Jason Momoa is doing the the voiceover work. There's um, there's a, a gentleman. I, his name is uh, Tom Puhaku Stone, uh, who is a surfboard maker. And throughout the documentary, it just kind of keeps cutting back to him, you know, carving and shaving the surfboard out of wood, and eventually, you know, painting the word Duke on it. And that's um, I'm assuming that's the uh, the surfboard that you see in that, um, you know, in the uh, in the movie poster in the, in yeah. the image for the for the film that's standing there on the on the beach, and I think that that's really neat that you're getting to, you know, kind of see, you know, that that artistry and that technique, and you know, going into it, and they and they actually talk about that when Duke got to to Australia, he was on like this kind of swimming tour because he had made friends with, um, you know, one of the Australian olympic swimmers and and he went there and wanted to surf but they didn't have surfboards yet they didn't know anything about surfing so he just he made a surfboard to go out and do kind of this big demonstration and you know it seemed like the whole like uh you know that whole part of town in australia came out to to watch him do that and uh that's that's pretty exceptional that's pretty awesome to be able to to share that part of your culture with you know someone on the other side of the world yeah let me just find this one review okay i found it okay there is a review on Letterbox um, from Tyler H. Films about Waterman. When he puts Isabel Lethem on the board with him and they surf together, crying face. I loved that moment. It was like in Australia mm-hmm. and like he was there kind of like, I don't know, I think like saying like women can surf too. And like it was just a beautiful moment. And like I'm like, that's better than like half the movies I've seen where they hold their arms up in the air, you know? So, mm-hmm. yeah. And yeah, it's definitely beautiful. Moment. Definitely. A, yeah, definitely a beautiful moment for sure. Um, and yeah, it just broke all sorts of boundaries and uh, Duke's life was filled with a lot of these beautiful moments. Um, then you, you do get the doses of reality though, that even though, you know, Duke was an Olympian, he was an actor, he had spread, uh, you know, basically gotten the, the sport of surfing, um, you know, spread around the world, you know, he's still, you know, (laughs) none of these were like money-making endeavors for Duke. So he kind of, you know, just was, you know, barely, barely scraping by, but then, um, you know, the kind of the people of his, of his hometown there, you know, made him the sheriff. He served as the town sheriff for a long time, which kept him, you know, kind of gainfully employed. And then, you know, was still able to, to go out and start his, uh, surf team and, you know, keep promoting surfing and, um, you know, this, this kind of this kind of lifestyle and um you know bringing attention to um you know the the native people of hawaii and like that the waterman uh philosophy and way of life 
Yeah, he was the ambassador of Aloha. He represented Hawaii uh, Pacific Islanders uh, to the entire world, and he did so well. And his story was, I think, largely unknown or diluted because he wasn't white. And I was reading this letterboxed uh, review of Waterman, Charm of Crows, uh, and I think it's a it's a good review, so I was kind of quoting that a bit. But um, the documentary, it doesn't go super in-depth into, like, into Duke's feelings about racism and colonialism, but I think it does uh, put things into context, and I think, like, it's a, it's a good documentary, and I really hope more people see it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, like we mentioned, the documentary is available now on PBS um, under their American Classics uh, programming. So you can just go to pbs.org, um, search for Waterman, and you know, hopefully you'll be able to watch it. They might eventually put it as part of like the. It's it's not really a subscription thing. It's if you make a donation to PBS. Um, some of the other documentaries um, are on there, and a lot of them are worth watching. So definitely, definitely go do that. But definitely, definitely, if you get a chance, uh, watch this one. It's about an hour and a half long. Um, and it's, it's unbelievable. This, the story is great. It's very, um, you know, it's, it's very uplifting, but at the same time, it, you know, makes you take a step back and, and think about what it means to be, a you know, an Asian American or Pacific Islander. And that's what, uh, this month is about is, you know, getting more of those stories out there and, um, you know, trying to see, uh, what we can do to, to be better, um, in the world and move forward. You know, that's something that we have talked about on the uh, podcast several times. So uh, definitely, yeah. definitely was important for us to see it. It was important for us to get together to talk about it. And, and yeah, we're very lucky that it came out on a PBS. So I was able to watch it. So uh, Cassie yeah. and I could record this episode today. Yeah. And there also is the book Waterman, the life and times of Duke Kahanamoku by David Davis. Uh, it came out in 2015. Um, and that kind of, gave uh this documentary like the documentary was kind of based on this book so if you can check out that book too and if you can check it out from an indie bookstore go for it so yeah absolutely so i think that's gonna wrap up uh this very special episode of inspired a galaxy um you know make sure you let us know if you watch the documentary what you thought about it and uh let us know what inspires you especially if they're are any uh, Asian American Pacific Islander stories that are inspiring you uh, this month in particular, uh, let us know and we can, you know, talk about that and, you know, give us some more stuff to, to watch and be inspired by too. So thanks for checking in with us. May the force be with you and aloha, Cassia. <laughs> aloha. <laughs>